unit on how to control the temperature. Now, our main role is two things. Prevent heat loss, because heat loss means baby will lose weight. And second, provide a stable thermal environment. Uh, I mean, uh, by stable, we mean preventing hyper and hypothermia. Uh, and there is something called neutral thermal environment, uh, which is uh, uh, the environment that makes the baby maintain uh, stable temperature and stable metabolism. No metabolic acidosis and also no loss of calories. That's very important, right? Because uh, once you provide the stable, you minimize oxygen need. So when the temperature is not stable, that means the baby will need more oxygen. And also the baby will need more calories. And that means the baby will lose calories, lose weight. So it's very important to provide that. The neutral temperature environment, it's usually when the core body temperature is 36.5 to 37.5. Now the thermal, regulation is not only from us, but the body can do thermal regulation, okay? Uh, uh, and the thermal regulation is uh, reflected by the maturity of the human being. So me as an adult, you as an adult can control the body temperature, 36.5, 37.5, whatever the outside temperature, because we are a human being and you can control, we have a thermal regulation. Now when you are premature, you don't. So it's our job to help the baby to keep the a neutral thermal environment. Uh, the, the, how we can do uh, thermal regulation? We should have enough store of calories, such as glucose. Okay, we should have a good insulation layer of the fat in subcutaneous tissue. Okay, we should have a, a normal hormonal function. The hypothalamus should function, and the muscle also should function. We have, should have a good mass of muscle to make environment such, you know, when we chill, and when we go shivering, we create temperature. Um, uh, the, there is other things that we can do in a, in a tan baby to control the temperature, such as kangaroo care. And kangaroo care is not controlling the temperature, but the part of the kangaroo care is the skin to skin. And uh, when the baby is on the skin of the mother, the, the mother can help the baby to stabilize the body temperature. So can, kangaroo care is a good, uh, to control the temperature of the baby uh, when the baby is not in an ICU or after delivery. However, when the baby is premature, especially those below 1,500 grams, uh, 15, skin to skin is not, uh, is not uh, enough. And also when we have a C-section, we cannot put the baby on the skin. And therefore, having a, a, a stationary place such as a recess there, with uh, radiant warmers and having uh, three towels, three towels, pre-warmed and ready to uh, control the body temperature because drying out of the baby control the body temperature. So these maneuvers, these procedures that we do after the baby is a very good way to control the body temperature. Now, uh, the, 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 uh, you have to know that uh, uh, the baby, compared to other, they have very big, large surface area. So their heat loss is more than us, especially from the head. So it's vital to cover these places to control the body temperature and put the baby in a very suitable uh, uh, environment to control the temperature. Okay. So what is the aim of our guideline here? The aim is to provide us, you and me, with enough information and procedures organized and we agree all of us about it. So everybody follow the same to control the body temperature, to prevent hyper or hypothermia or provide neutral thermal temperature, okay? So we need some terms to agree on once we, if we need to control the temperature. Is for example the brown adipose tissue. It is the fat uh, that present in the different places of the body, uh, such as on the neck, kidney, uh, on the scapula, and this brown fat is very effective heat generator that help us because the person start to do a lipolysis 
and generate, uh, uh, you know, heat to control. Cold stress. What is cold st uh, 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 stress? It's a cascade. It's a cascade. It's a successful event that can cause uh, uh, the body to fight the cold. So it's a cascade of events. It's a chemical reaction that helps the, the body to control the temperature when the body is exposed to uh, cold. And these are uh, uh, the, what we call a thermogenesis. Okay, uh, so the thermogenesis are vasoconstriction of peripheral vessels. Mm -hmm. So the blood don't go to the skin, stay in the core. Okay, and metabolism of adipose tissue. So that's how the baby fight and he calls this. Heat stress uh, when the baby is exposed to a higher temperature. Okay, so usually uh, the baby can get tachycardia and you know that's very important when the baby gets heat exposed, the temperature will go up, uh, uh, there is physiological response such as heart rate, and in this situation we need to make sure it's environmental, not infection. So usually we decrease the uh, heat exposure, and if the temperature is not normalized, then we might think of infection. So heat stress is, is also um, a problem. Um, uh, the control of the temperature uh, and avoid of heat stress is in, in a baby's inside incubator is usually controlled when uh, we use a thermoregulatory device containing a probe and servo control system to control the environment of the incubator based on the temperature of the baby. Now there are certain uh, 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 treatment procedures that we use is called high frequency oscillator. Now there are high frequency are of two types. High frequency oscillatory ventilator and high frequency jet ventilator. Now we don't have in the unit how how uh, uh, it's not SLE. We need to change it. It's a driver. This is wrong. We need to change this. It's uh, this is we don't have SLE ventilator or sensor medics. We have a driver, so we need to change this. Okay. Uh, so when we use a high frequency, sometimes we open the ventilator. Uh, very much, we need to adjust. Uh, so the baby might be exposed to cold because of that. So we need to make sure that we have a humidified, heated uh, uh, system to prevent. Hybrid coat is any coat that is open. So any incubator that is open is a hybrid. But sometimes, some unit, we don't have it here, but some unit, they have like large number of admissions and the, the, the incubators are not enough, so they cannot keep the babies inside incubator for a long time. So what they use, they use a cup but with a tent. So that's what we call a hybrid system. Incubator, we have the baby Leo incubators, and they're very good, and you know, they have temperature control. We have the open care system, such as cots. So we need also to have a, you know, open cot is, is the bassinet that we are using. Radiant warmer, we have the Ohio in, in the LDU and in the OT that uh, is open housing warmer. And this need to be uh, set prior delivery if we know when the delivery will happen. Sometimes we don't know, so we have to uh, act quickly to control the temperature. Thermoregulation or servo control is uh, the heat output inside the environment, such as incubator, are controlled autom automatically by the temperature recording from the baby. Thermoregulation is, um, is our ability to control the thermoregulation. Assisted, uh, so we have thermoregulation, which is self-control, and we have assisted uh, thermoregulation, and assisted thermoregulation is the help that we provide to an human to control the temperature. So um, there are many ways of heat loss. You have evaporation by uh, 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 when the liquid is vapor from the body. We have convection when it's transferred from body surface to the air. And we have conduction when we uh, touch. And we have radiation transfer of heat occurs through solid object, not direct contact with the body. So it's important to remember these 
heat loss when we deal with the baby to prevent or try to minimize the heat loss. Now, a premature baby has another problem, which is the disproportionate between the body mass, okay, the body mass and the service area. So they have a higher service area compared to their body mass. And uh, also they don't have insulation and they don't have brown fat to generate heat. And their epidermis uh, layer are not well, especially the outside layer, which is the stratum cornea, and therefore they uh, can lose fluid, they can lose fluid, and also they can uh, affect their ability to keep their body temperature inside. So these are the problem of the baby. There are poor vasomotor causing peripheral vasoconstriction. Okay, that is also very helpful. And the service area. So the service area is high, the prime fat is not available, the uh, amount of adipose tissue is not available, the epidermis are very permeable, uh, there is poor vasomotor, all this can expose baby to hypothermia. So when they are exposed to a cold stress, they cannot respond. So we have to prevent the cold stress on these babies. So when we need to provide thermoregulation, when these babies, so we said, there is thermoregulation and there is assisted thermoregulation. So when we provide assisted thermoregulation, when a baby less than 32 weeks, when the baby is less than 1,800 grams. Okay, when, whenever we provide humidity around the baby, when there is surgery and they're exposing the body, uh, when we are using sedation, okay, when we're using muscle relaxation, when we are using phototherapy, these are all indication when we do prolonged exposure due to procedure, uh, uh, whenever we need to monitor the chest or the abdomen for any reason. Uh, if we check the temperature and the temperature is not stable for any reason, okay? Or if we are isolating a baby for infection, okay? Or any other risk or any procedure, we are isolating the baby. So these where the baby need assisted thermal regulation. So what are the equipment? Our incubator can provide us with help. Okay, so when we use baby Leo, radiant warmer, okay. Uh, skin temperature probe is very important to monitor the temperature, but that's not enough. We need to check auxiliary too, but the skin temperature is usually to feed up, to give feedback to the incubator to control the environment. So we don't use it to uh, 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 assess a baby temperature. This is only a servo control temperature thermoregulation. It's not for a vital sign assessment. So it's very important, uh, uh, the, skin uh, the skin temperature, uh, and most of the time this skin temperature can be reusable, so we need to clean it and use it again. Uh, but remember when you clean it, remember it's become adhesive or non-adhesive? No, what is it's possible, doctor? Also, okay, so when to choose a device. So this is a table to show you how to use this device. So you can see when you have a surgical procedure, you can use baby Leo or radiant warmer. We prefer baby Leo, the baby is surgery and uh, he's premature. Uh, we, if we need a, a close observation for a long time, uh, we can use baby Leo as a premature baby, or we can use isolate. Isolate means incubator, but open. But it's not radiant water. So it's an incubator, but it's open. So they're open. That's what we call it, isolate. Uh, uh, any baby less than 32 weeks and 1,800 milligrams, we can use both isolate or baby Leo. If we require a, a humidification, then we have to use temperature control. So any baby is inside incubator with humidification. Usually we use baby Leo, isolate we don't use. If the baby is high, high frequency, high frequency can be inside the incubator, baby Leo, premature, but also we can use radio warmer. We can provide uh, 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 temperature control for a baby who is on uh, high frequency 
Okay, so how we assess the temperature? There are many weapons. We have rectal temperature. Okay. This is not our unit. This is Mr. Okay. This is copy and paste. So we need to NIC. This we need to change it. Um, we can, uh, so uh, rectal temperature, we have rectal profile. We have rectal temperature, we can use it. Yeah. We need to lubricate it, of course, when we use it. Just be careful, especially in premature babies. Uh, don't go more than two centimeter inside when you check the temperature. Uh, you need to turn off the monitor, wait for five seconds, and then remove, clean with alcohol, and then you can reuse it. We can use axillary temperature. So this is rectal temperature. We can use axillary temperature. So I need to change it a little bit, the uh, guidelines. It's still adjustment, okay? Axillary temperature, you need to know how to use it. Okay, so uh, um, put it on the arms, uh, wait for, uh, on the degree how you put it, wait for a while. Uh, you need three minutes, remember, uh, after you turn off the, the, the thermo, thermometer to check it. Uh, and parents can do it, but we don't need parents ready for that to do it. Um, so, so we check the temperature either by rectal or axillary. But how is the frequency? Usually we check it hourly if, until the baby is four hours stable temperature. Any baby is on admission, we need to check. Any change of an incubator, we need to check. Any switch between incubator, ranger warm or our cot, we need to change. Uh, check. We need to check the temperature before and after. This is in addition to the frequency. Before and after phototherapy. Before and after starting humidification. After admission, we need it hourly until four hours stable temperature. Uh, if we start servo control before and after, so put the probe, put the baby on automatic temperature control, we need to check it before and after. Okay? We need to document that. Once the temperature is stable after four hours, we need to check it for hour, rectally or axillary. Okay. Now the change in this this order might change depending on the situation. So you might need it more frequent, might need it less frequency. Uh, we need to change that. If the baby has NAS, we don't have NAS babies much, like neonatal abstinence scoring or uh, babies who are with drawing and uh, you know the temperature, hyperthermia is one of the systems of NAS. Uh, so this is very rarely we do it, but usually we check the temperature with, with NAS. NAS, please. Neonatal abstinence syndrome. Um, so these are any babies who's with drowning from a medication that the mom was on. It can be addiction, and it can be antipsychotic. Uh, alcohol. Uh, um, alcohol is not, no, we're talking about narcotics. Mm -hmm. Yes, marijuana, not now, but we are talking about any addiction drug. Mm -hmm. And also if the mother is on sedation, such as mm -hmm. morphine, fentanyl, also on some antipsychotic medications uh, mm -hmm. can go with us. But we rarely see this in our unit, not very common. Anyhow, we can also check the temperature with each time we score the baby for mass. So uh, check the temperature for hourly, or if you want to get more easy before each time, mm -hmm. or you know, alternately. We need always to check the prop for servo control. You know, we need to do frequency when we check the prop. So let's say every six or every 12 hours, we assess the probe. Is it adhesive, non-adhesive, clean, not clean? So when, where, where we put the probe when we check the temperature? Uh, it should be central surface. So we're talking about abdomen, okay, or chest if the baby is so fine. If the baby, and usually you prefer the liver region, okay, or the front when you are on position, so over the kidney. Okay? So in the flat position. Now avoid 
the prime deposit tissue such as back, axilla, scapula, neck, kidney. Okay, we need to avoid these places. Uh, don't put it on the pony prominence because the sensitivity is less. Okay? Uh, also, make sure that not placed between mattresses and the infant. Okay? Because it can create false reading. Okay? Uh, if you have transcutaneous gas monitoring, you need to avoid a little bit away from it because, you know, transcutaneous is a chemical uh, sensor. Okay? Uh, avoid the wound dressing areas. Okay? There might be variation between the axilla uh, temperature and the probe by uh, 0.5 to 1 degrees, uh, degrees Celsius. Okay? Remember that the servo control probe is not for vital sign check. It's just to control the environmental temperature. Sure. The probe should be recited every eight hours or when you reposition the baby. Okay? And take care when you remove a patch to minimize skin trauma. Okay? I, I don't think we have this type. We have a different type. Okay? Uh, uh, you can wipe it also. Uh, and then you can reutilize it when you want to uh, after cleaning. Once you re uh, uh, put the uh, uh, prop after reinciting it, you need to observe the baby four to five minutes for uh, uh, making sure that the temperature is stable. Uh, servo control is a very good method to control the temperature and we can maintain the body temperature within a specific range. If the temperature move outside this specific range, we need to check the temperature. Just make sure that uh, if outside or a huge change in the body temperature, uh, you know, a significant change, it's not an infection. Okay. Yeah, we talked about it, that if there's significant change, the target axillary temperature here for babies less than 17.50 and more than 17.50 is 36.8 and These are, uh, these are description of starting temperature depending on the weight and the age of what, you see? So you have the age, you have the weight, you have the starting temperature mm -hmm. and the range of temperature, and this is depending on the age. So this is very important to follow. This is graph, very important to follow. You see it? It's very important on the age and weight. Okay. So if the age is, for example, uh, after Our six baby hours, being 33.5. Yeah, you see it depends on uh, less than 1200, 12 to 15, 15 to 200, more than, okay. And then second 12 hours, uh, second six hours, and then second 12 hours, and then uh, third 12 hours, and then. Uh, for 12 hours and then the fourth day, okay? And you can see, and then here, by days, you see the days and then weeks. So it's very important to monitor the temperature of the day. I need a little bit adjustment of this time. So generally speaking, that the smaller day we need higher temperature. Okay. Um, usually, the babies who, who have weight range um, usually set between 29 uh, with minimal clothing. Uh, okay, I think I need to pause this. So, if the temperature is outside 
the normal thermic range. If the patient temperature less than 36.5 and not being uh, actively cooled, initiate the following. Increase temperature by 0.5, check axillary temperature hourly until two consecutive temperature is normal. If the patient does not require the close observation, then layer the baby, cover the baby. If the temperature now on the other side is more than 37.5, okay, assess environmental factor, assess the geological factor, decrease core temperature by 0.5, check axillary temperature until two normal. Consider always If you're giving temperature higher than normal, always consider to wean it after the temperature is stabilized. Otherwise, um, uh, make sure that this baby is not sick. This, this is not uh, uh, sepsis. So once you need more temperature, more, more, more servo contact. The baby is on servo control. You will not see any uh, 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 baby that is uh, the temperature is high. Uh, but uh, mostly you will see that the incubator are turning down and making the environment cold. So that's an uh, indirect indication that the baby temperature is going high. But the, if the baby is on manual control, not, there is no uh, servo control temperature, there is no probe on the skin, and the baby's temperature is high, then you increase the incubator temperature, check the temperature twice, axillary, and after two, if normal, then think of me. Now, remember that when you change the incubator, open the incubator, do the procedure, uh, change the, the, the probe, all this might change the temperature. So always consider that. Now, never turn off the incubator off. Okay? You can open the window. Uh, you can uh, decrease the temperature, but don't turn it off because the fan will never work. Okay, so not only the heating system, but the fan of the incubator will stop working. Okay, and therefore, if the baby is on room air, then and there is no fan, the carbon uh, dioxide and maybe monoxide will accumulate, and the level will become high. Okay, now documentation is very important. Do you have a flow sheet or you don't have a flow sheet for that? Uh, hmm? hmm? you have a flow sheet in the MEAP for the uh, system temperature sheet we have? Yeah. yeah, okay, very good then. When we transfer the baby to, I think we have a guideline here, uh, clear guidelines, we want to transfer. When the baby is more than 1,800 grams, there is weight gain, and there is, uh, there is no apnea, there is no IBDs, um, stable condition hemodynamically, uh, no ventilation, uh, and no observation to expose any area. Okay. Once the baby is in open cot, the temperature needs to be checked also, mm -hmm. at least twice, to make sure that the temperature control is OK. And maybe then the frequency change. So maybe, uh, you know, here's every three hours uh, for three times need to be checked. Uh, if the infant is temperature change, you might need to put the baby back in the incubator or in a pre-warm situation. If the baby is in a warmer just after delivery and the temperature is cut, you might consider to transfer the baby to open cup. Special consideration we have when we use humidity, we have the, uh, 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 the protocol now for the humidity to control the humidity and at the same time the temperature. So when the, when the baby inside the baby incubator uh, uh, need uh, to cut
combine the thermal regulation with the humidity regulation. Uh, the uh, please intention of the water bag remains attached to the pot and laminated card in the drawer is placed on the mattress to ensure cleaning staff can easily identify the entire process. Do you have a process to clean the these? Uh, yeah. So we need a, a, a document with the incubator making sure that the cleaning staff when they clean yeah, they are open. Yes. Okay. So I'll the surgery can be done. We don't have we currently don't have surgery here, but or when the surgery can be an open gradient warm up or hybrid if needed. We can use any additional systems, such as heat pads, uh, when we do surgery, for example. I've been and a few times in the operation for certain babies. So we can use a heated bag to help that uh, if it's an open coat, or a, 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 we cannot do it in, in a already in warmer. We can use uh, what we call a full helping system or full system to help. Yeah. Uh, can we look at, we talked about it. I don't think that it's be more. And these are the differences. Okay? Sounds good? Thank you very much for attending. And I will send it to everybody. Sounds good?